Good morning and welcome on uh, YouTube and welcome to Talkie Girls Grammar School. I'm uh, just setting up everything to make sure everyone's here. Apologies for a few delays there, a few technical issues with the Wi-Fi, but we're uh, ready to go with you this morning. Um, this morning we're going to be doing a, a gougere pie, which is savoury choux, and we're going to be looking at sauces as well. So uh, we're just going to give everyone a few minutes to join us and we will be with you very, very shortly. Uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, Fabulous to have you. We'd love to know where you're from. Um, please put your comments along the side and uh, any questions or queries, and I will get back to you as we're going through this cook along live. Um, and like I say, we're just uh, getting this uh, the camera sorted for the school as well this morning um, and getting that uh, up and running as well. And a few, a few little technical difficulties, but we'll be with you very, very shortly. So if you just want to uh, bear with us, we will be with you in a moment. Uh, we're just getting the cameras sorted, say, for school. And uh, we'll be able to simultaneously live stream this one to you on YouTube and uh, to, to you all at school as well. So uh, we're just getting those cameras set up for us now. So like I say, what we're doing today is we're going to be making a choux pastry. So we're going to be making a savoury choux pastry instead of a sweet one. Uh, we're going to be looking at different types of sauces how to make sauces um, and different uh, sorts of sauces as well to go in this one. We're going to be looking at a bit of the food science. So we're going to look at a bit of some gelatinization, how that works. Um, lots of different things um, this morning. But like I said, just, just getting everything uh, up and running um, our end from school. Um, just getting that working and then we'll be with you. Um, so just one moment. There we go. Camera's just running. So we're nearly there, everybody watching this on YouTube. There we go. We're just getting our cameras sorted on there. Fabulous. We're up and running for school. It's normally the other way around. It's normally the uh, YouTube that uh, we have the issues with we're simultaneously doing this one, but today it's uh, from the school. So good morning, uh, Talkie Girls Grammar School. Uh, apologies there. I don't know what happened with the second camera for Talkie Girls Grammar, but I'm here and raring to go. So if you want to mute your mics and if you've got any questions at school, just leave those down the side in the uh, chat. That's fabulous. Again, Apologies for the delay in getting to you. Uh, if you're having problems, again, we're having a few issues with Teams this morning. If you are having problems with Teams, just uh, jump over to uh, Facebook where we are, sorry, onto YouTube where we are on uh, their Live for Fun Kitchen. So uh, um, we will be ready to go. So uh, welcome, 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 everybody. Welcome those of you watching us on YouTube. Uh, welcoming those schools watching us on YouTube. Welcoming uh, to Talkie Girls Grammar and all of us watching there from a very sunny Devon morning this morning. Um, uh, it's very lovely out there. I'm looking over the estuary here, over the Devon rolling hills, uh, and it's looking beautiful this morning. Um, right, let me just uh, just get that one. There we go. Let's see. Uh, now, if you can put your thumbs up, you can hear me. I know you can see me. Can you all uh, thumbs up? You can hear me. Uh, fabulous. You can hear me. Uh, we are all ready to go. So we've got everybody in class there uh, ready to go. We've got you at uh, in the schools watching us on YouTube ready to go. Uh, let's get started then. So today, like I say, it's a gougere pie. It's a savoury choux with a Mornay sauce. Now we're going to be talking a lot about sauces this morning. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about different types of sauces and a little bit about how you make different sauces this morning. And we're going to be looking at some food science called gel of gelatinization how that works as well. We're going to be, um, more importantly, looking at it from me, I love a shoe pastry. We're going to be showing you how to make a shoe pastry, but a savoury shoe pastry um, that you can put around and um, form the outside of what is going to be our gougere pie. Um, so um, lots of uh, fancy words, isn't it? Um, some lots of high skills as well involved in this one. So if you're thinking about taking this for GCSE, this is crammed full of GCSE high skills, and we'll talk about each of those individually. So uh, let's go through um, the learning objectives for today. Let's go through and uh, go through those for you on the board here. So today you are going to be demonstrating um, how to make a shoe pastry, as it says there. Um, you're going to be demonstrating how to make a shoe pastry, but also a shoe pastry dough and also a roux sauce. So you're going to be making a particular type of sauce today, and that is a roux sauce. And we'll talk about the differences to making the sauces and the different types of sauces a bit later. You're going to be understanding gelatinization and physical aeration. Um, so again, some of the terms that we use at GCSE, we're going to bring it in here because I love a bit of food science in the morning on a Friday morning. Um, practice making different sources and of different viscosities. Yes, we're going to be doing that 
Viscosity, that's a great word. I love that word. And what does viscosity mean? It means thickness. So we're looking at the thickness of sources as well uh, and what that means uh, for uh, when you make different things. So all very interesting stuff this morning. Um, now, before we begin, whether you're in uh, uh, year six to year 13, we always start with the same thing, though, uh, as you know, and that's about getting yourself ready, getting your area ready, getting your equipment and your ingredients all the way around, strike that, ingredients and equipment ready, okay? And we're gonna be doing the same. I'm gonna be talking you through step-by-step step everything we do today. Um, uh, but before we begin, we need to uh, play it, remember to play it safe in the kitchen, okay? And we need to learn how to play it safe in the kitchen. Um, so, uh, rolls and regs to start with, let's get them out of the way. Um, firstly, um, make sure you have, if you're cooking along with me live today, that you have got, uh, it's permission to cook along with me live, it is safe to cook along with me live, and you have a suitable grown-up uh, at hand who is responsible and can be responsible for you <laughs> your supervising at hand as well you always need a grown-up to lend a hand they're always very useful there too hopefully you've got one of those on standby as well okay and um, more uh more disclaimers about that on youtube just along the bottom of the terms and conditions there at the bottom Okay, um, so let's get started then. Uh, next slide. Um, we are going to be looking at uh, this and we're getting ourselves ready. And to remember to get ourselves ready, this is our starter activity. Um, we need to be thinking about what's involved um, to cook hygienically. Okay, the last thing we want to do is get any contamination in our food. We don't want hair in our food or any other bits and pieces in our food that's going to cause, cause what we call contamination, um, whether it's biological, physical, or chemical, which we talk about again um, when we talk GCSE, but contamination. So what we need to do is say, say get, uh, get um, our yourselves ready, get yourselves ready. We need to make sure we're area is ready and we need to make sure we're set up and safe and ready to go or our equipment and obviously ingredients ready. And I'll talk you through ingredients as well. So if you've got any questions about the ingredients or alternative ingredients, then we can talk through that as well. Don't forget, we're in a lockdown larder situation, so I fully appreciate that not, you're not going to be able to get hold of all the ingredients, but I'm going to show you and talk you through different ingredients that we might have available to you and that you might be able to use today. We also need to think about different diets. So you might have an allergy or an intolerance. You might um, not be able to eat any certain foods for any moral, moral uh, uh, religious or ethical reasons. So we'll talk about those as well as alternatives to your food choice this morning. Okay, uh, right, um, fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. No questions so far, let's get straight into it. Like I said, I'm gonna talk you through everything together. We'll do all of this together. Um, the recipes, you've got the recipes. If you're there at Talkie Girls Grammar School, you know you've got the recipes. If you are watching on YouTube, hopefully you've got the recipes through social media as well, so you've got hold of them. But if you haven't, this will be on the board behind us as well as we're going along. For the Eagle Eye, we're using the Hodder Education Package. This is the package we use for slides and education here at Talkie Girls Grammar School. Brilliant, but thank you, Hodder Education. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's move on then to what does this getting ready call? We use the word Hattie to remember what we need to uh, have in place before we start to cook. And mise en place, mise en place. That means um, to put in place. So we're from the French, it actually means to put in place and to get ready before we start to cook. And this is what Hattie stands for. We have H at the top there. Who wants to tell me what H stands for? Come on, you know this one back at school. Tell me down in the, down the comments there. Let me know down in the comments, write it up there. Um, what are we standing for? You might remember, know from YouTube as well, if you've been watching some of our previous uh, ones. Yes, it stands for hands and hair, exactly. So if you've got longer hair, longer than me, obviously I'm losing my hair, I don't need to worry about that so much. But if you've got longer hair, can you make sure it's tied up or you're wearing a hat to make sure that that hair doesn't end up in your food? That'd be disgusting. Um, also, very important, hands. You know in these important times that we're in, crazy times we're in at the moment, that washing your hands is ever so important. But it is paramount when we are cooking as well to remember that we don't get any kind of food poisoning or anything into our food. So we need to be washing our hands. That is for the H. The A is for, uh, A is for, A is for, what is A for anyone? A is for, da -da 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 -da. Quick the mark. it is for had apron. Okay, so again, it might seem a bit odd to be wearing an apron or protective uh, uh, when you're wet in the kitchen at home, and a bit like a hair, hair tiny hair, but it might seem strange when you're cooking in your own kitchen at home. Um, but we're in a class here, and it's important that we make sure that we follow things, doing things correctly. So can you make sure you've got yourself an apron on, an apron at the ready to put on as well? And we'll go through 
step by step all of this together. Okay, um, then we've got the next T, which is our tabletop. Is our tabletop nice and clean? Have you cleaned your tabletop? Is your tabletop nice and clean? Have you washed it down? Maybe you sanitized it, maybe you've seen an antibacterial spray to make sure your sides are nice and clean before we start to cook. Okay, then we've got the next tea. Uh, the next tea is one of these. It's a very useful device to have in the kitchen. It is a tray, a tray for the next two ones, which is I and E, and the I and the E is for ingredients and equipment. And we'll talk you say through um, what you need for both of those shortly, and the alternatives, because we, like I said, we're, we're not in a classroom, we're at home, we're in a lockdown larder situation, so you might not be able to get hold of everything. So we'll talk you through all the different alternatives step by step together, and then we'll go through the recipe. Okay, so let's get started. We need to get ourselves ready. I've got a lot of my stuff ready, but I have not washed my hands. So I'm gonna hop, skip and jump over to the other side of the kitchen. So if you'd like to follow me, I'm just gonna move the camera around as well so you can see me. Let's move the kitchen around. There we go, there's my kitchen at home. Uh, let me move that around so you can see what we're doing. And we'll move the camera around here. Let's take the camera with me, this one. Uh, let's take this camera with me. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can come with me. Uh, we're going to come over to the kitchen. So come on over to, to, to the uh, kitchen size here. There we go. And we can move that on now so you can see what we're up to as well. There we go. Um, so hopefully you can all see me there. Right. Uh, Hello, 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 hello. Back over here in the kitchen. Um, right, so we need to make sure that we have washed our hands and ready to go before we start to go. So uh, you're gonna need some soap. Here we put all the plants over there. Um, we need some soap there, nice soap. And we need to wash our hands properly. So we need to rub our hands together properly so we're all washing those. But we also need to go to the back of our hands between those fingers on both sides. Um, okay, we need to make sure we don't miss our thumbs. So have you got your thumbs all uh, clean there as well? Um, a lot of people remember to forget the back of the hands. Let's make sure we've got the back of the hands all sorted as well. And let's make sure we have cleaned that. So I'm now just going with some hot soapy water. There we go, hot soapy water. And we are just going to be, again, rubbing together, back of hands, back of hands, thumbs in there, wrists. We are properly cleaned all over. Clean your hands, clean, 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 clean your hands. Fabulous. Um, now, uh, just dry those hands off as well. Okay. Now, as well as that, because I'm going to be really, really clean, I'm going to be putting some antibacterial gel on as well there. And I got some hand gel there. I'm just going to put some of that on as well. So we are properly, 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 properly clean. Uh, okay. Uh, we don't want to say any contaminants into our food. Okay. Hopefully you are all clean to your hands too. Now, how long do we need to clean them for? You know the drill now. We've been doing this a while now for the last year. It's been drummed into you, but you know that it is happy birthday to us. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. And so on and so on and so on. 20 seconds is what we need. 20 seconds is what we need to clean our hands properly before we start to cook. Okay. Let's come back over to uh, the uh, area there. Right, fabulous. Okay, and back to me. There we go. All right, back to the board and back to me. Let's just fix that camera back in. Fabulous. Okay, everybody, uh, you can see me. There we go. Back to the board. All right, we're going to talk through the ingredients. We're going to talk through the equipment before we start to begin to cook. Um, there we go. Let's put that one back in. Sorry, moving around a bit there. There we go. Okay, uh, so now I've done that, I'm just gonna roll my sleeves up and gonna get my protective um, gear on before I start to cook as well. So I'm gonna actually put on, I'm gonna go uh, over the top here, I'm gonna be putting my chef whites on, nice clean chef whites on here. Um, and I, while you get your aprons on, so you have got all your clothes protected before we start to get uh, messy and uh, not messy before we start to have some fun in the kitchen here making our foods today So can you make sure you've got your aprons on too? I'm just gonna say getting mine on There we go. Nice clean top. Um, so uh, but again, you may notice this is a food teacher center That's the Association of Food Teachers um, Forum of all the food teachers around the country. Just putting my top on there. There we go on there uh, and, uh, Apron, apron, apron. I'll tell you what I'm gonna just put my apron around the middle today because we're going to be backwards and forwards. Uh, my apron. There we go. My apron on. My food teacher centre apron. Where are we? There we go. 
going to wrap that around my middle and tie that one up. There we go. Fabulous. So all tied up and ready to go. Hopefully you are too. You've got your aprons on and you are also ready to uh, cook this morning now. So that's yourself ready. Now we need to look at the equipment and ingredients we need to get ready. There we go, I'm ready to go. Hopefully you are too at home now. So what are those different ingredients and equipment and what can alternatives can we use? Since like I say, we're in weird times at the moment and you're not actually in school, you're learning this online to your various uh, places you are at home. Uh, so um, let's go through them again. They're on the board there and I'm gonna go through them step by step with you there as well. So the first ingredient, some butter. So we need some butter. Here we have some butter. Uh, now, you, again, you might be uh, you might be vegan. You might not be able to have uh, the, um, some dairy butter. So um, I've got some plant-based butter here. So I've got some plant-based alternative, and that will do absolutely fine um, if you have it. Um, I'm looking at um, unsalted butter, but again, if you've got if you've only got salted, we'll go with what you've got in your uh, in your kitchens at home or wherever you're watching us at home. Okay, so we need some butter. Um, we need 75 grams of that. Um, we are going to need some plain flour. So um, I've got some, uh, some my plain flour there. I've got some plain flour. But again, uh, you might not be able to get hold of plain flour. And you might only have something like I don't know, some bread flour. So if you've got some bread flour at home, you, this bread flour will, will, will work with this one. It's, it's slightly stronger. And in fact, normally when you're making a stew pastry, a, a bread flour, a stronger flour would, would work actually probably a little bit better in a way. But... We're just gonna go with uh, things that you might have in your kitchen. So plain flour is what I've gone for for this particular recipe. Right, next one, milk. Okay, so um, it could be again, we could be looking at dairy milk, or instead of a dairy milk, um, you might be looking at dairy alternative, vegan, whatever the reason might be. So I've got some oat uh, milk here, and either or either is gonna be a fabulous in this one. They're both gonna work there, um, and you can be using, using that. Oh, no, I did mention with the flour as well. I said about, um, and let's look at the alternatives there. So if you were using a flour, flour and maybe you're celiac, or you, know, you can't have gluten in your diet, uh, then you can use some free from plain flour. What I would do if you're using some free from plain flour, I'd add a little bit of xanthan gum in there as well. So I've got a little bit of plain free from type flour, so gluten free flour, but I just add a little bit of glue, um, xanthan gum, a teaspoon of that in there with you while you're going along to, to make that one. Alrighty, uh, that's the first few ingredients. One, two, three, let's go with cheese. So cheese, again, um, we, we look at alternatives here. So what can you use? So I've got some We've got some dairy uh, cheese there, but you might want to, again, if it's, uh, you're looking for a dairy alternative, you can go with a block uh, cheese, a flavoured block cheese, which would work fine with this one if you're looking to put that one into this one. Um, so you, you, you can right. I mean, you don't need cheesing, but in this recipe, it will work without cheesing, but I do think it's uh, adds something to it, um, and it really does add to the flavour. So um, I'm going to be saying cheese with this one or a cheese alternative with that one. Uh, what do we got next one? All right, mustard powder. I'm going to got some mustard powder here. Um, now, uh, you, again, you don't need mustard powder, but it does add a really nice taste to it. And it's only a tiny amount you're gonna be needing this one. Um, so I would be going with some mustard powder, half a teaspoon, that's hardly anything in there. Um, teaspoons, um, with, that's a little little spoon, okay? So just a half of one of these teeny tiny spoons. So. Um, yeah, I would, I would recommend putting it in there. Um, alternatives, uh, you can put some nutmeg in it, which tastes really nice with going with this one. That that would, would work as well. Um, oh, other ones, no nutmeg, no mustard, maybe some uh, cumin would work quite nicely in this one as well. This sort of savory, earthy uh, fla flavors would work really nicely, alternatives there. Okay, um, then we've got a vegetable stock. So um, again, uh, we can use, look at what other stocks you've got. So stocks are these tiny little blocks of, uh, here we go. So we've got some here. We've got some, some little uh, some little veggie veggie stocks here. And you can see there, you see them, little, little blocks, tiny little blocks there. Um, you can use a vegetable one. You can use uh, different types of stock. I know nowadays you can get stocks in like the little uh, gel, so you can use those as well. How much do we need there? Well, again, it only needs a uh, half a teaspoon. So we need a tiny little bit of this to crumble into our stock. What is stock? It's like a dehydrated um, uh, water whatever it is. It might be vegetables. It might be um, parts of a beef. Um, it might be chicken ones you can use. But I'm going to go with veggie ones on this one. Um, 
okay, I'm trying to do a nod to Veganuary. I know it's February now, but we've been trying our best to reduce the meat consumption. And that is something that government here in the UK has really been uh, hot on at the moment. It's trying to think that as a nation, we need to reduce our meat consumption as much as we can. Not necessarily everyone is to turn vegan, but uh, from, from a health point of view, from an environmental point of view, we should start to think a little bit more about the alternatives, which is why I'm showing you all the different alternatives. I'm not saying you can, you have to, um, but you can use these ones. Um, eggs, so let's go on to the next one. So again, your eggs, eggs from chickens. So I have eggs here from chickens, but maybe uh, we're looking at an alternative for that one. So your alternatives for that is you can use aqua faba, which is like a, a, an egg alternative. You can use powdered egg there instead. Um, what other things could you use? Oh, well, you can make your own this. So chickpea water, if you've got a can of chickpeas at the back of the cupboard there, um, you can open that up and the water that's inside there, drain that out. That is this stuff. This is what you pay for here in a separate egg, or egg alternative. And that works really well. You can make meringues out of that. If you've ever, ever, if you've ever run out of eggs uh, during lockdown and you want to still make meringues, if you've got a can of chickpeas, you can use that to go and get the chickpea, uh, you can get chickpea water um, and that can be whisked up and make meringues out of that crazy stuff. Uh, okay, nearly done. Rashes of bacon. Right. Now, again, this is a, this is, you don't need to do this one to make this one, but I do think it works well. So um, let's have a look at what we've got there. So we've got, um, we've got some bacon. Um, I've got some, here we go, some, some uh, smoked bacon there. Um, so we can use bacon if we want to. Um, we can use uh, this, uh, which is, um, this isn't bacon. <laughs> so I'm going to use um, this one as well, which is not bacon, which is odd. Um, this is a meat substitute, so a uh, plant-based meat substitute. You can use that instead of bacon, and I'm going to be doing that one myself today. Um, or if you haven't got any of that, maybe just some ham would work well. So you could use a little bit of ham in there if you wanted to use that into there. That would work well as well. So ham, bacon, or a meat substitute, which is what we're going to use it today, a plant-based meat substitute as an alternative. When you're thinking about your choice of ingredients to go into this one. Okay, that's your ingredients, and hopefully now you've got all your ingredients set out in the kitchen, and that's looking wonderful. That's part of your preparation time, which we call mise en place, mise en place. Um, so uh, when we come to GCSE, it's really important that we get all this set up in advance because you'll be cooking, uh, timed cooking if you're doing GCSE, big dishes, high-level dishes. This is a high-level dish, but we're doing other ones. Right, uh, let's go on to ingredients. Uh, let's go to from ingredients rather to equipment. So um, what equipment would you need for today? Okay, you're gonna need some of these. Saucepans. Okay, so you're gonna need saucepans today. Um, you're probably gonna need two saucepans today. So I've got a couple of saucepans. So make sure you've got saucepans there close to hand. You're gonna need a frying pan, which is, you may have seen over there, so on the other side there, we'll, uh, shoot over there in a bit and we'll show you that frying pan's already over there um, and I've got a spatula in there actually a wooden spatula as well it's a non-stick pan so a wooden spatula if it wasn't a non-stick pan so non-stick means that that black coating to it that doesn't stick um, but uh, like you might have teflon one um, or something like that but if you haven't got one of those um, so if you've got one of those you need to be using wooden devices if you maybe it's a stainless steel you can be fine with maybe a, um, a more metal one it's not going to be too bad. Okay, uh, wooden spoons, wooden spoons. Um, you're going to need some tins, some tins to do this in. Now, um, to make your bougère, I would suggest, I've got a few here, different things you could use again, thinking about alternatives for you. Um, so, um, I was, I'm going to be using one of these, like a, a flan quiche um, tart tray, one of these round ones, it'll work really nicely. I'm going to line that one, I'll show you how to line that one. Um, if you haven't got something like that, you could use a um springing open cake tin that would work like a, um where the bottom comes out of it or even with one without, without the bottom we can still line that one so you could use a, a round cake tin um i mean if you haven't got anything at all you could just use um you just use a flat tray but um ideally one of these and um, you can recycle i've used these before i mean when i have like um and if you have a pie at home you sometimes get them in uh those tin trays um like an uh, aluminium tin tray so rather than you can recycle those ones and use those. But that's what we need today. So something like that. Uh, Grease-proof paper. Yep, we're going to need to get some grease-proof paper. Uh, the two jobs for the grease-proof paper. So I'll tell you what those two jobs are for that one. Um, and then what other things have we got here? Uh, pastry brushes. Let me just grab that one. We've got some pastry brushes just here. Uh, oh, where is it? Where is it? There we are, it's there. there are pastry brushes. Now, if you've got a pastry brush, you could use a very cleaned, very cleaned 
uh, paintbrush or a new paintbrush. So um, I'm going to use this. <laughs> and I'm going to show you some alternatives there. Um, teaspoons, tablespoons, there we are, teaspoons, little ones, tablespoons, big ones. Okay, um, now anything else? Well, I said a whisk as well. You don't need a whisk, um, but I'm going to set up a bit. Let me show you what other things you could use. <coughs> so, ah, there it is. So you could use a whisk, um, which could be useful for today. Um, you could use an electric whisk. Uh, I'm using it as my KitchenAid as well um, over there. But you could use a whisk or, ah, no whisks, no worries. Forks. If you get two forks like that, you have got yourself an instant whisk. Ta da a metal whisk there. Um, so uh, if you haven't got a whisk close to hand, um, that could be your whisk. Two forks kissing like that. And that would be uh, another way of doing that. So try to use simple stuff that you've got at home. Now that's all your equipment and your ingredients. Let's see it, take any questions. So for questions, uh, can we use ceramic? Ceramic ones. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming we're not talking for hair straightening here. Um, <laughs> no, for the pie, of course. Uh, ceramic dishes for the pie, yes, of course. You can use a ceramic quiche flan, tra uh, t um, like a circular um, flan dish, ceramic flan dish, or a ceramic tart dish around one of those would be absolutely fine instead of a metal one. Um, so no, you don't need to have metal ones. So that's a good question. Um, any other questions on ingredients or equipment? Anything else I can tell you about uh, today before we start? No? Okay. Um, so let's get started. And I'm going to talk you through some of the food science, which we'll write up on the board here as we're going along as well, and tell you a little about what we're making and how we're going to make it. So let's get the recipe up on the board. Let's start going through this recipe step by step. Now, the actual process of making today doesn't take so long, but there's a lot of high level skills involved, as you can see from this recipe. My recipes are in step by steps, always 10, 10 or less step by steps for all my photo uh, recipe cuts. Uh, they're nice and easy to follow, but I will talk you through each part of it as well. So you can follow each part and you know exactly what you're doing each time as you're going along. All right, so let's uh, start from the very first one. The first one is about making something, that's making the sauce, making what we call a roux sauce. If you look on the board here, I've said um, we want to be making a choux pastry and a roux, which is a sauce. Okay, now um, choux, spelled C-H-O-U-X, roux, spelled R-O-U-X. So they've both got these endings, these oohs at the end, O-U-Xs from French. Uh, yeah. Now we are going to uh, show you how to make these different sources um, and they are both high level things. If we're talking about GCSE, which is where we're leading to with all of this, where you've been leading through from seven, eight and nine or maybe seven and eight, depending on where your GCSE started, different schools. But for us here at Torpy Girls, we're at seven, eight, nine. You've been leading on to some, some key skills. So we've been doing bread, pastry. Pasta, these are all the key skills of GCSE, bread, pastry, pasta. Um, we've got sauce making, and then we've got knife skills. So we've got knife skills using um, fish filleting, chicken portioning, uh, vegetable cuts, um, all going into sort of garnishes and decorations as well, which sort of goes in that direction. But they're like your big things that we'll be to, doing a lot of details. So that's why we're leading to this one. Um, so a roux is a type of sauce. Now, um, uh, roux is the method of making the sauce, but there are also different types of sauces as well. So let's talk about these ones. Let's talk about the roux. Now, roux is one of three methods we could use to make a, a white sauce. Roux is one. Um, there's other ones called the all-in-one and the blended. And these are all methods of making a sauce. We today are going to be using the roux method, not the all-in-one and not the blended, but there are other ones you can use to make a sauce. So what's involved in making this sauce? Well, we're using some key ingredients to start to make our sauce. Those ingredients are fats, flour, and a liquid. Okay, um, and we're going to be using those ones. I mean, you could just use a flour and a liquid, I suppose, but with fat, um, adds a lovely texture and an appearance and a flavour to it. So it adds quite a lot from a sensory point of view. So those three things when I'm making a sauce, a fat, 
a flour and a liquid. And the liquid um, I tend to use is a milk, um, could use water, but the milk um, again adds a depth of flavor and it has more, uh, more, more things happen to it when we start to heat it up, which will help to thicken our sauce as well. So each one of those methods uses the same ingredients. Um, what we've got is the blended method. So you put one ingredient after another, after another, and you bring them all together. The only one method is you throw it all into one, into a, into a pan, and you, you, just, you just stir it all in, all in one. But they are the easiest way methods to make a sauce. And we want to go for a high level. We want to push you all to a high level for the skills. So we're going to do the hardest one, which is a roux. So how do you make a roux sauce? Well, the first thing with this one is we need to melt the butter. So we melt the butter off. Then we, when we do, we do, once we've melted the butter off, we can take the pan off the heat. We can put the flour in. We can stir the flour in until it's completely incorporated into like a paste. And that's what we call our roux base to our, this sauce. So we make this pastey stuff, the roux paste. So we're going to make that little paste in there. And then we, we uh, put it back on the heat and we start to add our liquids and we gradually add our liquids and we stir those liquids in and we create our sauce. So this is probably the more time consuming way to make your sauce, but this is the higher level way of making your sauce. And you will learn to add different amounts of liquid to your sauces um, to make it a different viscosity. Now this is this word viscosity. Um, so within each of these three sources, you can make, three sauce making methods, you can make three different types of sauce. So let's go with the this three different types of sauce. And this is all dependent on how much liquid you put into it. Okay, so uh, anyway, the reason we're not doing these two, simple, but also another reason is because you get um, quite a flowery flavour to them because you, you're not doing things, you know, if you're all in one, throwing it all in at once. You're going to get, it's not, it's a slightly grainier texture, it's a slightly flowerier taste. The taste, this is the far superior sauce, the roux sauce, which one I'm going to show you how to take. Now, like I say, you can get three types of roux, you can get three types of each of these, and that's down to viscosity, how thick the sauces are. So you've got... The first one, which is a pouring sauce. Pouring sauce. Now, a pouring sauce is exactly as it says, it pours. So think of a runny sauce, and I'm thinking of one here, and I'm thinking of a uh, particular type of gravy, okay? Gravy would be a really nice pouring sauce. In fact, it can be quite a watery pouring sauce there. So a gravy would be a pouring sauce. Um, Let's think, uh, we, can, we can make it thicker, of course, and you can make it into the next sort of sauce. Thicker is the coating sauce. Now, a coating sauce is a kind of sauce which coats the back of a spoon and it will stick to the back of the spoon. It's a slightly thicker one. You squeeze it out and it will form a bead it's good, um, before it goes down. Um, so here we are. Here is here's one. We have got some ketchup. So this would be a coating sauce. You coat your food with that one. You might have a thicker custard. You might make as a coating one just to cover your food with, and that's a coating sauce. Then the third one, which has got a weird name, is a binding sauce, but it's got another weird name. So that's a binding sauce. Now a binding sauce is used to bind our food together. So if you're making a fish cake, you might make a really thick sauce to bind this one together. So you wouldn't add as much liquid to this one, okay? So the more liquid for the pouring, less for the coating, and less again for the binding as you get thicker sauces. And that really thick sauce, again, the GCSE word, is called pan, not panda sauce, panada sauce. It sounds like panda. It's called a panada. A panada sauce. Now you can make all three of these types of sauces, these different thickness sauces, in all in one, in blended as well. But we're going to be sticking with the roux. And today we are going for a thicker sauce. Okay, we're going for a really thick sauce because this is going to form the center, almost like a quiche center, to our pies. So I am going down this end. Now, not pouring. I don't mind if it's slightly coating, but we want to be going 
either of these two here, okay? Either of those two would be down this end. That's how thick we want to be going with it. All right, resources, let's see questions. Um, uh, let's have a look at some questions. We've got some questions coming in and I can hear them binging away. Here we go, any more questions coming in? Uh, nope, they've gone. Um, you can still hear me, good, brilliant. Okay, so what we're looking at today is we're gonna be making a roux sauce to start with and we're gonna be making a thicker end. We're either doing like a binding or coating sauce. Other way to say binding is called a panada because it's gonna hold this whole pie together. Um, so ideally a binding, but we can go between the two of them there. Okay. So that's, this is the end we wanna be at. Today, we're gonna to be making that roux sauce together. Okay, once we've made the roux sauce, we're gonna be then showing you how to make the choux pastry. Um, and again, choux pastry is another high one. So pastry is one of the high level pastries, roux is one of the high level sauces, and you can turn this sauce into different things. So once you've got these, like sometimes there's mother sauces, so you've got your, your base sauces. Um, once you've done your, your, your sauce, then you can add things to it. So you could add meat juices to it, um, and it could be something called a velouté sauce. Um, you could add, well, we're going to be adding cheese to this one and a little bit of bacon. And we're going to be making the roux sauce into what a sauce called a Mornay sauce. Okay. Um, so different sauces can be made from this very simple roux method. I'm sorry, the very, not the simplest roux method, but the roux method and making it into different viscosities for different food types. Okay, hopefully all that makes sense today, talking about sauces, and I'm going to show you that one now. Um, so we're going to be starting with uh, step number one, two, and three. We're going to be melting into this one 25 grams of butter. So let's get this pan in here. I've got my pan here. I've got my, uh, my scales. Now, if you haven't got scales with you, don't worry, because I know we're at home. So what I'll do is I'll measure this one out and show you how to measure this one out. Okay, so you've got your butter and we're looking at 25 grams of butter. Now, when you're doing this one, we have uh, we have equal quantities, so equal quantities of fat to flour. So you can use 25 grams of flat, fat, 25 grams of flour, or you could use 50 grams of fat, but then you're gonna need 50 grams of flour. So whatever you do to the fat, you need to do to the flour as well, okay, when you're doing this one, so you get equal quantities. So I'm gonna go with that one. Um, now, 25 grams, easiest way to remember this is if you look on the side of these, um, these actually, very helpfully, are measured in 25 grams. So you can just slice off 25 grams off your block of fat there. Uh, same with the, the um, vegan one here, so our plant-based one. Um, oh, this one is actually 50 grams, so you'll be able to just measure half of one of those and slice that up if you haven't got scales. Otherwise, let's try and keep this accurate, and let's try and use scales if you've got that one. So let's, uh, to save ourselves our washing up, I'm going to go straight into using my saucepan. I'm going to literally go straight into the pan here with mine. Um, so I'm just going to measure it straight into the pan. So what does 50 grams look, or 25 grams look like if you're doing this one at uh, home? Let me just show you if I've got that. Oh, look at that first time. That is 25 grams of butter. So it looks like you're using, you can use one spoonful, one large spoonful of butter. In it goes into our pan. That is in there. That is our 25 grams of um, butter in there. Right, okay. Now, in with the butter, we need to get the we're going to have the flour ready to go as well. So what we're going to do is get 25 grams of butter, and then we're going to stir in, once that's melted, we're going to stir in the flour onto this one. So we're going to have 25 grams of flour, so let me just grab my little bowl here. So let's get 25 grams of flour ready to go into this one. Now the shoe and the roux, I'm going to get very confused here between shoes and roux, because apart from the, the, the words sounding very similar, the way you make them, the ingredients, and where we're going to be doing this is, is there's some similar, they're going to look very, very similar when we start to make these ones. So we've got to be careful to do one thing first. So we do the roux first, the sauce first, and then we're going to move into the choux, the pastry, a bit like the fish rolls, second. Otherwise, we're going to get very confused. And this can happen at, so when we work in pairs at school doing this one, and somebody makes a roux and somebody makes a choux, you end up somebody piping, we've had this before, somebody pipes the roux, and then uh, they, they make the choux center. So make sure you get the right way around because they all start to look very similar at one point because there's some similar ingredient makeup. But um, we're going to be using the flour now. So uh, how much flour, did you, how much butter do we put in there? 
Who's gonna be first? YouTube or Talking Girls Grammar? Who's gonna write it in there first? That's it, 25 grams. So how much flour do we need? Equal quantities. If you're making this at home and you haven't got a recipe near you, if you wanna make your own sauces, equal quantities. That's right, so you wanna be putting in there the same again. So again, if you haven't got scales, how much is that? Well, let me show you. Um, this one with spoons as well. So here we go. I'm just gonna show you with spoons. Large heaps, tablespoon there. And one. And there we are, I've got two, two tablespoons for me. Um, for that one going in there, and that one equals 25 for me. Um, let's see what that uh, is for you as well. So I've got my flour, I've got my butter ready to go. Now the next thing I'm gonna need is I'm gonna need some liquid. So the liquid I'm gonna use for this one is I'm gonna use some milk. How much milk? Well, depending on whether you use scales or whether you've been doing this uh, roughly measuring it, either by cutting in spoonfuls, um, we wanna create this end, a thick sauce. So I'll tell you what, I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a rough amount, of course. Um, so what you wanna be doing in here, I've got my measuring jug here. Um, so I'm gonna be putting, have, starting off here with 100 gram, 100, uh, mill, sorry, 100 milliliters of liquid here. So here's my milk. I'm gonna be doing 100 milliliters of milk into this one. Um, now, I want you to judge this one so we're going to be starting with 100 millilitres there. And we're going to be going with this one. And we're probably going to end up maybe adding a little bit more, maybe add a little less, depending on whether you wanted a pouring, coating, or binding. We're going for the thicker end. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start with 100 millilitres there. Um, so that's what it looks like, 100 millilitres. But again, don't worry so much about measuring this. We're not in the classroom, and I know you're at home. So I'm going to show you. What you're going to do is you're going to judge this one and we're going to bring this one together into a beautiful sauce. So let's uh, let's go over to the kitchen and over to the hob, and we're going to start to mix this one together. Now it says whisk until it's smooth roux before adding uh, the cheese. Now we need to get the cheese for this one as well, a tablespoon's worth of cheese. So let's uh, let's get that ready as well while we're over here. So a tablespoon's worth of cheese. And again, if you're measuring this one accurately, let me show you what a tablespoon looks like. And again, I'm going to let you um, change this one if you want to and adapt this recipe, because I tell you what, at home, um, it's very much like that. Um, you get to change and adapt, and we would do doing that for GCSE. Changing and adapting recipes is all, what it's all about at GCSE, having a play. So we want a 25, we want um, a spoonful of, um, which is about 20 grams of cheese. Now, depending on whether you, how much you like your cheese, um, you might want to put a little bit more in there. So 20 grams is max for this one. You might only want 15, 10, 15. I don't know how much you like your cheese. Um, and again, that can be a dairy cheese or it can be a cheese alternative. Tell you know what, I love my cheese. I'm gonna go for a full 20 grams of cheese. And what does a 20 grams of cheese look like? Well, let me show you here. Um, there we go. It's about a tablespoon. Um, I'm going with about two tablespoons there for 20 grams. About 10 grams, 10 grams there for cheese. So we've got my cheese. I got my flour, I got my milk. I tell you what, let's hop, skip and a jump over to the kitchen and I'm gonna start getting ready. Now, the other thing you're gonna need, um, if you're using a, let's see, this is a uh, steel pan, it's not non-stick. So I'm gonna go with a whisk with this one, okay? Um, I could use um, two forks with this one if I wanted to, or if you haven't got that, just go with the wooden spoon and stir this one together with that one. Um, so whichever you feel is best for you, let's go over and let's go to the kitchen and start to heat this up and make our sauce. We're going to mix it all together, we're going to boil it up and then we're going to make a smooth sauce with it. Okay, here we go. So let's just move the cameras over so you can see what we're doing. There we go, just going to move the camera, that camera over, that camera over and I'll tell you what, YouTube you're coming with me. Let's, let's go over together. Okay, I'm going to just zoom in there. So you can see us too. Fabulous. Okay, uh, right, so you should be able to see us there. You can see us there at school. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Um, let's get going in the kitchen here. So um, here I am over at Hob. I've got my ingredients we've just laid out. 
Don't worry about the electric whisk or the KitchenAid. We're going to use that one a little bit later on, okay? So um, let me just move that one up so you can see. There we go. Thanks. Um, so, um, yeah, don't worry about uh, don't worry about these. We'll come back to these later. Right, saucepan. Let's move this one in front of that way for a moment as well. We'll come back to that one. Saucepan. Heat. Saucepan on the heat. Heat's on there. About a million heat would be fine. Now, remember, you're on the hob here, so you want to be careful with the hob. You want to make sure pan handles are not sticking out. There's no chance they're going to be going to be knocking it over. So we're going to keep the pan handles off the side there. So keep the pan handle off the side, not sticking out over where you can knock it over. All right, so be careful with that. And we're just going to melt this fat off. The fat is now melting away in there. Um, and then you need your devices ready to go for that one. Uh, are you going to be using uh, a whisk, a wooden spoon? Uh, which of those are you going to be using? It's entirely up to you. Um, which one you're going to be using. I'm going to be going with today, I'm going to go with a, a whisk. I don't need to. I could be going with a spoon, or I could be going just a couple of forks. In fact, I'm going to try a little bit of spoon to start with, I think. Okay. The other thing to remember is you are in charge of the heat. The heat is not in charge of you. So if it's starting to spit, take it off the heat. Okay, take it off the heat, that's fine. Turn the heat down, that's fine. Don't be scared by it. If it's starting to spit, just remove it from the heat. Remember, you are in charge of it. Do not let the heat be in charge of you. So that is lovely melted. If you can see it on the camera, let me just have a look so you can see that one. I get to see that one. Let me move that one down so you can see. There we go. Um, we've got that one all melted off there. It's just a little bit left in the bottom. Lovely melted. You can see that one melted off as well. Okay, let's go back to the kitchen. Uh, right, so we've got that melted off. So the next thing is once we've melted that off, we're going to be putting in the flour. So I've got my flour here. You saw me measure that one out before. Equal quantities of fat to flour. We're just going to put that into the bowl. All of that in. Perfect. Right, next. We're just going to stir that through. I'm going, to use, I'm going to use my wooden spoon. Let's keep it basic and we'll come back to this later. So I'm just going to use a wooden spoon. You can use a whisk. But if you don't get using a whisk in this one, you don't want to be using a metal whisk um, in a non stick pan. This is not a non stick pan, this is a steel pan. You see how it's like silvery? That's fine. I could use a metal whisk in this one. But don't use it if you've got a black non stick pans at home, otherwise, you're going to end up with. Lots of little black bits on the side, bits of metal coming up inside your food. Now, you should now have a paste, a roux paste. Hopefully, you can see that one on the board. There we go. We can show that one. You see that paste in there? There we go. See that paste? That's what we're looking to get. Uh, that's what you want to be up to. That is your basic roux. All of that flour is now combined in. Now, time for your liquid. I'm going to put it back on the heat with some liquid. I'm just going to cover the base. Just cover the base over there with my liquid. I've got about half the liquid there, so about 50 there. And I'm just stirring this one through. Stirring and stirring and stirring. At the moment, it's starting to look a little bit like lumpy sick. Don't worry about that. We're just going to keep stirring it. And what's going to happen is some magic. Well, it's not magic, it's science. Um, and this is the science, one of the science things that we talk about when we get to GCSE. It's really, really exciting. Um, this is the science of gelatinization. Gelatinization, gelatinization. I love uh, uh, gelation, gelatinization. All of this stuff where we are using some of the things that are in the flour. Now, flour's got a few really important stuff, bits in we're going to talk today. It's got some protein in it and it's got some starch in it. Now, starch is, let me keep stirring this one, starch is a polysaccharide, complex uh, sugar, complex carbohydrates, polysaccharide, saccharide meaning sugars, poly meaning many, 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 many. Um, and what's happening is those uh, polysaccharides, the starches in there, those long chains of sugars, poly meaning many, are beginning to uh, unwind. And as they begin to unwind and become looser, um, like, think of it like a necklace, loads and loads of beads on it. Okay, so that's like a 
it's got polysaccharides, like a necklace with loads of those beads over it. And what's happening is, um, it's all in a bundle, and then as we heat it up, we add that heat energy to it, um, what's happening is they're beginning to expand and pull apart, and as they do so, um, we, we're going to be um, taking on board our water, and then, it, then eventually the starch is going to, so it's going to, so what's going to happen is the starch is, think of it starts like a, like a balloon, maybe that's a better idea, a balloon, and it's expanding, 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 and then all of a sudden, boom, that starch is going to pop, release in, uh, into our, and as it does so, we're going to end up with a salt. So we'll talk more about that and amylose and amylopectin at GCSE. Um, but uh, can you see, all of a sudden, that liquid, which looks like lumpy liquid, is now starting to turn into a smooth source. Now, depending on the sort of source, that is a very, very thick source. That is like a binding source, a panada source. I'm going to make it a little bit thinner by adding the rest of that milk. Now, I could keep adding liquid until I get to a pouring source. If I wanted to make a, a pouring source, um, that would be fine. And I can make this sort of sweet or savoury at this point. Like I said, you can add different things to it. So I could make it very, I could add some um, other liquids, some uh, meat stock, some meat juices, and turn this into a gluten sauce. I could add, that would be like a savoury sauce there. I could add um, chocolate, cocoa powder, and ice and sugar to this and make it into a chocolate sauce. Um, I could turn this basic sauce into all sorts of different things. Now I've added some more at the last bit of liquid. It's a bit lumpy again. So back on the heat, so it can start, all that starch can begin to unwind, it can take on water, and those starch are gonna, gonna, gonna swell up, and then boom, they're gonna, uh, all of a sudden, they're gonna burst. And as they burst, they will start to not be lumpy anymore, it will turn into a lovely smooth sauce. Okay, and here we have it again. Look, a little bit lumpy, but I'm stirring it, stirring it, stirring it, and then it's starting to burst. You can see it's bursting and forming a lovely creamy sauce now. Um, now, depending on how much flour and flour you put in there and how much butter you put in there, you're going to need to add a little bit more liquid in there, whether that's milk or water in it to make it the right consistency for you, that right thickness, that right viscosity, okay, that's what we call um, the thickness of it. So we're gonna, I'm gonna back on the heat here. Remember, you're in charge of the heat. The heat is not in charge of you. We're just gonna heat that up so it's always, I think it's nearly all burst. Here we go. I love gelatinization. Gelation. Making a gel, I suppose, is that thickening. If you think of a gel, you're like, what's thick and sweet? It's like jelly, isn't it? Like, you get that sort of like that gel. I like that. Okay. It's thickening. There we go. Uh, anyway, gelatinization. Starch takes on board the liquid, it expands, these little chains expand that form the starch, then boom, all of a sudden um, they burst. Very good say. We have ourselves. A beautiful, smooth sauce, creamy, smooth sauce. Now that is a thick sauce. Look, if I hold my spoon upside down, is it falling off? No, no, it's not falling off. Okay, not only is it uh, so, if it's pouring off, it would be a pouring sauce. Okay, um, if it was coating the back of the spoons, it would be coating sauce. If we turn it over and it just doesn't do anything, look at that. That is my panada or binding sauce room. Okay, that's where we should be up to. So I've got myself a binding sauce there. It's creamy. There are no lumps in it. So hopefully yours is the same. No lumps at all. Have we got any pictures at home you want to show us? If you want to turn your cameras on, let's see how yours are looking at home. Let's have a look. Who's who's got theirs? Who wants to show theirs off? You don't have to. Let's. You want to stick your cameras on if you are cooking along and see how yours is looking. But does yours it's got a creamy, smooth? roux sauce and we're looking at a binding roux not a pouring or coating roux we're looking at a binding one so it should be creamy and no lumps and it should be sticking like that have we got any of those let's have a look anyone want to show <laughs> no that's fine okay so we've got there our sauce so that is the center of our gougere pies our shoe pastry pies and that is my wonderful roux sauce lovely and creamy Okay, now we're going to turn that sauce, that roux, into another sauce, we're going to turn it to a Mornay. And what are we going to do by doing that? Well, 
put my cheese in. We weighed out earlier. I'm going to chuck my cheese into there. Here it goes. Fabulous. Cheese is in. I'm going to stir that through. Cheesy sauce. Now we've got cheesy white sauce. Oh, I like cheesy white sauce. Cheesy white sauce. It's getting thicker now. The cheese is starting to melt in there. Beautiful. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Cheesy white sauce. And what did I say for putting the cheesy white sauce? I said some meat or meat alternatives. So I'm going to be putting in there um, my bacon or plant-based bacon is what I'm going to be using today. My bacon, 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 bacon. Um, uh, it's a plant-based um, alternative. Now, if you're using a real bacon, that's fine. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to leave that sauce on the side there. I'm going to come back to my frying pan. Do you remember we talked about the difference between non-stick and uh, stainless steel and non-stick? So this is a non-stick one. It's got that black uh, coating. You might have like a Teflon one or something like that. I'm just going to very quickly uh, fry off the bacon there. So the pan there onto the hob. Let's go and grab the bacon. Uh, so you can be using a fake bacon, which is fine. Um, you can be using fake bacon or you can be using real bacon um, that's entitled to you, or you can use ham into this one. We're going to put that one into our roux sauce, which has now changed from a basic roux sauce into a Mornay sauce. As we add the cheese to this one, and also we're going to say, put some bacon y um, or meaty alternatives uh, into that one too. So let me grab that one. I'm going to cook along with you live. So let's do this one live together. Here we go. So I've got my, my bacon bacon, baked bacon here. I'm just going to soften this one up, same as you would do with the, um, um, the meat-based one. Just going to break this one up into small bits into my frying pan. Just going to heat that one up, so let's put the heat in there. Uh, do we need any oil? You don't really need any oil in this one. They're going to be quickly stirring it up and just softening it up, so you, you won't need any in this one. Um, but uh, if you wanted to, then I would always try to go with something like uh, one of these ones, into like a, a spray, spray low-calorie, Oil, they're always quite useful. Otherwise, just a little bit in there. Just put a little bit of that one in there. Just a couple of little sprays of those ones in, um, which are always quite convenient. We use one of those. In there you go. Let's put our bacon in there, or fake bacon rather. We're using this plant-based one, plant-based bacon. Like I said, we we should all be thinking about what goes into our bodies. And I had a, we had a talk about this uh, the other day in lesson time, which was quite interesting, with the, um, with the year eights. We are looking at food provenance and where our food comes from. That's the, the posh word for where our food comes from. I'm just going to break this up and put this into my pan while we talk. Um, so I'm just going to put my bacon into there, breaking it all up. And it goes, breaking it up small. You can tear it up, cut it up, use some scissor snips to get this one into there, so get your bacon into the pan. Uh, and there we go. So we're talking about where food comes from, uh, food provenance. Uh, we're talking about that with the year eights. And um, it was interesting, we were looking at, at things like this one, like this baked bacon. Um, oh, how many do we need? Couple of rashers. Someone's saying, that. how many do we need? Couple of rashers in there, just into there, just gonna soften this one up. Anyway, yeah, so we're talking about where food comes from, food provenance. And we were looking at um, the alternatives to the food when we're making food choices. So um, being meat alternatives, and they're like, well, that hasn't got as much protein, has it? You don't need your protein, you need protein. You do need protein. You need protein for your body, because you all need protein. Um, you need pro protein for your body so that your body can repair and maintain um, itself. So you're continually needing to repair and maintain yourself. Every time you do loads of exercise and you tear your muscles, you go out and do your, your walks, your, your daily exercise locally around wherever you are, um, then you're tearing your muscles and you need to repair those if you're doing a you know, little jog around the block. So you need, you need protein for repair meters. Um, but actually, um, you'll find more protein in some plant-based uh, foods. So um, ounce for ounce, you're going to find more protein in a mushroom than you would do in a beef steak. Um, so don't, it's a misconception that you're going to get uh, less protein from plant-based alternatives. That, that's not true. What is, there is, uh, we'll talk about again more at GCSE, there is a difference between um, high biological value and low biological value. High biological value meaning 
all your amino acids that you get, because protein's made of little building blocks of amino acids. Um, so there are some plant-based foods that are high protein. You need to match up or marry up protein complementation with other foods. So baked beans is a really good source of protein, but it doesn't provide all the protein that you need to maintain your body. So you need to mix that with something else that's a good protein source, which is like a, a bread. Baked beans on toast, boom. High protein food there, really high protein food. Meat alternative, it's excellent. So it uh, doesn't have to be fancy to get your high protein in, and it doesn't need to be meat to get your high protein in. So on the pan there, I've got, uh, and you notice I've got a non-stick pan, so I'm using a wooden uh, spatula there. I'm just softening up my bacon there. I'll run and take a few minutes just to soften that up. And don't forget, it doesn't need to be fully cooked because we're gonna be putting it into the oven uh, later on, okay? So we'll put the whole pie into the oven. So don't worry about that, just softening this up here. And this softened bacon is gonna go in with my white sauce, my roux sauce, which we've now turned into a Mornay sauce. Viscosity-wise, it's not pouring, it's not coating, but it's a binding sauce, which we call a panada sauce. It sounds like panda, <laughs> and it's spelled very like panda, actually, but it's a panada sauce. Okay, that's just softening up nicely. Okay, that's great. And again, you might be using ham. If you're using a ham in there or a meat, uh, a plant-based alternative to ham, just tear that up, put it straight in. No need to do any kind of softening up here. Um, you notice hand here, the handle is not sticking over the side. Again, think about the old safety there while we're in these kitchens or in your kitchen at home. So think about that one when we're doing this one. Okay, that's nicely done. That's nicely softened up. Good news, good news. Okay, I'm going to, it's just starting to change colour a little bit on there as well, which is great. I'm going to get that into my sauce, and that will be ready then for the centre of my gouchere pie. The centre of this is going to look, a, um, and it's going to look a little bit like a quiche pie centre. So it's going to be a little bit uh, moist uh, in the middle there, um, and I say it's not going to be a firm pie. It's going to be quite a moist pie. It's going to be quite. Um, it's, it's, it's taste gorgeous pie, but. Um, but uh, that, when you're thinking about it texture-wise, what's it like? Probably it's more of a kishi type centre. We're going to cook off that sauce to form the centre of our pies. Okay, that's done nicely. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm going to put in that, switch the heat off. I'm going to put that in with my sauce now. Beautiful. Let's get that in there. Got to good. Okay. So I've now got my sauce in there, sauce there, mixed in with cheese and my meat alternative there to form the centre of it. That's now a Mornay sauce in there with my cheese, with my uh, meat alternative in there. That's what it looks like bom, 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 bom. on the cameras there. Can you see that one? Hopefully you can. Let me just have a look. So you can see that's what it looks like. Mine looks like. There we go. Ah. Right, now let's work on our shoe pastry. Um, we're going to now do shoe pastry. Another saucepan here, another saucepan. Uh, let's come back to my centre here and we're going to talk to you about getting everything ready for the pie. Okay. Back to me, back to me, back to me. There we go, everybody. Fabulous. Let's have a sit down for a minute. Okay. Um, so we've worked through now. We have now done some one to three which is making our room. Okay, so you can see on the board there, one, two, three, making the room. Now, we're gonna make the shoe, and then we're gonna put it all together. Okay, so we're gonna do the shoe next. So to do the shoe um, is a very different sort of pastry to any pastry that you might have made already um, in school. So we've looked at short crust, um, we've looked at puff pastries, rough puff pastries, ones we call laminated pastries, where you've got layers of flat, fat and layers of flour in there. This is a different sort of pastry altogether. This is one where we have to do something completely opposite to what we would do normally. Normally you want to keep your pastries really, really cold. You want to keep your butters really, really cold, your fats really, really cold. And you want to get the fats into the flours um, so when they are really, really cold, so they can either form layers in there when they expand with the air in them, they begin to expand there. Uh, but we do want to normally keep our pastries really, really cold. This one, along with, uh, what other ones are there? Hot, 
hot water pastries there as well. This is the opposite. We want to get our fat completely melted. In fact, we want to get it really hot. In fact, we're going to boil it in water. Um, we, we want to get our fats really, really hot. Why is this? Well, this is all down to the raising of these ones. And if you think of a shoe pastry like a profiterole or a chocolate eclair, um, and they rise up, they puff up, what have they got inside them? When they cook, when you get them out of the oven, what have they got inside them? Before you put in that beautiful creme pat or custard fillings or chocolate fillings or custard, whatever you're going to put in, what is inside that when it comes out of the oven? Anyone want to know? Let's have a look. YouTube or on there? Uh, yes. Yeah. Perfect. Just air. Air that is actually got evaporated water in it, known as steam. Okay. Um, so this is why we are going to beat in. I'm going to melt off our butter in boiling water because we're going to be actually um, beating air into this one. I'm going to be beating in the water into this one because it's going to be the steam and the air that's going to actually help us to raise this one up. We're not using, we're not going to use raising agents like, um, uh, we're not going to use any kind of raising agents like self by baking powder, made of bicarbonate soda and cream tartar, the acid now apply chemical raising agent. We're not going to use a raising agent you might use in bread, which would be yeast. Um, you could use a quick bread with bicarbonate soda as well, like a soda bread, but you can also generally, traditional one would be made with yeast with biological raising agents. That is a microorganism that blows bubble called yeast to raise it. No, to raise this pastry up, we are using um, um, both the physical action of us beating air in, and we're also gonna use the steam in there, the water in there, that's gonna expand our foods as well. Right, fabulous. Um, uh, right, uh, so we're gonna be using um, lots of different things there to, to, uh, to make them rise. Okay, uh, so let's, let's do this one. Let's get the water in there and we're going to make it rise. Uh, okay, so what we're going to need for this one is we are going to need the water. We're going to go for 150 millilitres of water there. So let's grab my, oh, let me grab that. So we've got 150 measuring jug. Measuring jug there. So measuring jug, and we want to put in there 150 millilitres of water. Okay, just tap water into that one. We're going to get the tap water in. There we go. So we're going for 150 millilitres. There we go. And again, you might not have measuring jugs at home, so let's show you what that looks like in spoonfuls going into my pan. I'm going to go directly into the pan here, so here you can see. I'm literally just going to pour this straight into the pan, but we'll do it by spoonfuls in there as well so you can see what we're doing. Okay, so uh, we've got in here 150 millilitres of water. So let's go with this one. That is, I'm going to count these through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, nearly there, 22, almost there, 23, 24, should be 25, a little bit extra. Okay, um, so you've got, if you're using, not using a measuring jug, so you want to do in there just over 25 spoonfuls of water in there. 150 millilitres of water is in that one. Now, in with that, we're going to be putting a third of um, extra of the, so third of that one, uh, 150 is going to be 50 millilitres of, uh, sorry, 50 grams of the fat into this one. So, there we have the water. Let's go and get the fat in there. So what we're going to do with this one is we're going to put 50 grams in. So let's put the 50 grams in. Again, you can use the measurements on the side of the butter to get to work out what 50 grams is. Um, I will get the scales in there for you so you know how that one is as well. 
Here we go. So 50 grams. So what does that look like? You can remember from before what 25 grams looked like. There we go. 50 grams. Let's measure that one off there. Let's do a bit more. There we are. Perfect. So I put the fat in with the flour. So that's what 50 grams of fat looks like. That's going to 150 millilitres of water. That's all in my pan, ready to go. Now, fat and water don't normally mix. They're what we call an unstable emulsion. Um, what this means is when we melt this off, you're going to, the water and the fat are going to look like they're not mixing. They're going to look more like a lava lamp, I suppose. Um, so um, don't worry about that because when we get the flour in, they will start to gel together. Okay, um, and that will be absolutely fine. So let's work on that flour. How much flour do we need? 60 grams of flour. Now, don't be putting 60 grams of flour into a bowl. You want to put 60 grams of flour into a piece of paper. A piece of paper? Yep. You want to put it into a piece of paper. So you can put it into greaseproof paper, or if you've got a sheet of A4 paper, that will work fine. And what goes true? This is going to create a funnel. Okay, we're just going to create a little bit of a funnel here. So I've got my sheet of paper here, my sheet of greaseproof paper, and I'm going to create just a funnel. Now, how am I going to do this one? Well, very simply, what I'm going to do is I'm going to there we go, sheet of paper, rectangular sheet of paper. I'm just going to fold it in half. Okay, and I'm going to measure my flour onto a folded in half sheet of paper. Why? He says, why? Could we use uh, plastic funnels? Yep, you could do, uh, but put your finger over the end of the plastic funnel if you're doing that instead, okay? So what we're doing here is we're gonna put it over into, we're gonna measure it onto some paper. Now the reason we're doing this is because when we make our shoe pastry, we need to shoot, we need to shoot the flour in really, really quickly without obviously splashing back boiling water or fat onto us, but we need to shoot it in really quickly. Okay, so we need to get it in there very, very quickly. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure it onto the sheet of paper. And then when we come, when the butter and the flour, butter and the water are boiling away, or all melted away, we're going to then all of a sudden, over our pan, we're going to shoot all the flour in. And then we're going to beat, 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 beat. Okay. And we're going to beat it all in together until we've got uh, all of that air in there, all the water incorporated that's going to form the steam that's going to make our sheet pastries right. But also while we're beating it, the flour, we are creating something. Flour and water form something sticky, something sticky and stretchy that is going to be forming um, a sticky stretch like bubble gum, okay? That is going to allow our steam to expand and our air to expand inside it. And that sticky stuff like bubble gum, that chewy, stretchy stuff we're going to make when we throw the flour into the water and beat it together is going to be called what? Anybody? What do we reckon? YouTube or... Talky Girls Grammar, what do we think? Anyone want to believe any comments? What is that sticky, uh, gluey stuff? Oh, I may have just given it away there. Uh, gluey stuff, it starts the same way. It both come from the same Latin word. Uh, no, oh, close, close, very close there. Not glucose, but glue, gluten. Perfect, we're gonna make gluten. That is gonna form the stretchy outside to our shoe pastry. Okay, same as it forms the bubbles that makes up our bread. Um, uh, all the holes inside our bread. It's that gluten um, that's going to form. And when we make our, our, our laminated pastries uh, and it stretches um, and forms that crispy top, that's the gluten on there as well. Um, so we are going to come and create gluten by throwing it in really quickly. But it's really important we do it quickly. So I've got my sheet of paper folded in half, ready to go. And into that, I'm going to put in my flour. So I'm going to be putting in there, as it says there, 60 grams of flour. So I'm um, in, I'm going to measure that out for you. So here's my flour here. So what does 60 grams look like? I will show you what 60 grams looks like. And we'll do it all in tablespoons and teaspoons again, just so you can do it at home. If you haven't got scales close to hand, I want to help you all so you can all cook. Well done. We've got a few glutens coming there. Well done. You've got it. You've got it right. Recap and consolidate our learning from before. One. Two, three, four. Yeah, perfect. So uh, four level tablespoons of, uh, that's the big spoons, of flour. Now, I'm going to add something else into that. Do you remember I said I'm going to add some more bits and pieces in there to season it? 
Do you remember what the seasoning is? Oh, flour a bit. Seasoning we're going to put into this one. Do you remember those, the flour? <coughs> into the flour, we're going to put some seasoning. Ooh, only half a teaspoon of this one. So you don't need to worry about it if you don't like the taste, because it's only a tiny little bit in there. It does add to it. Little yellow box. Anyone remember? What could it be? That's right, a little bit of mustard powder. So I've got a little bit of mustard powder there. I'm gonna put half a teaspoon in with my flour, just to help season that one off. In that goes. Uh, half a teaspoon in there. I'm also gonna put in there a little bit of that, uh, those little stocks, remember those little stock cubes? I'm gonna put in there, in fact, I'm not even gonna put half, I'll probably put half a third, a third I think. You know, just uh, let's get a little stock cube there and crumble in. You know, unpack it. There we go. So I can a little present. It's like Christmas present. Oh, I love that. I'm packing it. Look, um, so I'm packing it. See what's inside. And what have we got inside there? It is a tiny little stock cube. Okay, I'm going to just crumble in there. Just going to crumble in about a third, actually. And it goes. That's on top of that with a mustard powder. Yeah, a third would be, third would be strong enough. Um, if you can put half one in if you want to. Save that one for later. Um, that's quite nice. It's going to be Give me, give us a lovely, lovely finish that one. Okay, so we've got that one in there as well to fix paste it. Um, okay, I think we are nearly ready. I have got my flour in my sheet of paper, ready to take over for me. I have got my saucepan, which has got the water and the butter in there, ready to go. Um, the next thing we need to do is we're going to be going, we're going, ooh, let's see, we're already over halfway here now. We're over half the lesson as well. Um, eggs, we're going to need the eggs for this one as well. Um, we're going to need an egg to go into this one. Um, so uh, let me take this one over to you as well. Now, at this point, I would definitely suggest we use, uh, we, we are going to use a whisk as well as a wooden spoon. So I've got a wooden spoon and I'm going to use a whisk Okay, all the two forks if you haven't got a whisk. Okay, and I'm actually going to use, probably use the kitchen aid. And a little tip here, um, if you've got, uh, to make your shoe pastry, you don't need to, but um, I like to use electric whisk if you've got one. Or like I said, I'm going to use my kitchen aid over there as well. But um, when it comes to later on when you're adding your egg, it just creates a really nice shoe pastry, really smooth and loads more air in there you can possibly get in there by just beating, um, and it's a lot quicker as well. So um, I'm gonna use those, so if you've got uh, a whisk, just a normal hand whisk, perfect. If you've got uh, two forks, they've been said for a for whisk for later on, perfect. Um, if you've got an electric whisk close to hand, that's really gonna help you out. That would think it's gonna get even smoother. You don't need to, but it's just gonna be quicker, smoother, more air. If you've got a KitchenAid, Bonus, um, you can use one of those, but uh, but you don't need to have one of those. It's like a stand mixer, so you've got one of those, don't need to worry about one of those. Um, right, let's get over to the kitchen. I'm gonna take all my equipment and ingredients over the kitchen, and I'm gonna make you this wonderful savory shoe. I'll show you how to do that one. Okay, so let's move the cameras around. Okay, I'm just gonna move the camera around there. Do, 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 do. Move this camera around. And we'll take you, if you're watching us on YouTube, let's come with me to the other side. Oh, let's move that around as well. Okay, and we'll just zoom in on that one again. And zoom in so you can see what's going on in the kitchen there. Fabulous. Oh, apologies for the noise outside. There's a pheasant outside the back door. There we go. The, uh, <laughs> the wonders of living in rural Devon, there's a pheasant making an almighty racket outside my back door over there. So apologies if you can hear the pheasant, that's the, that, that sort of crowing, crowing noise over there. <laughs> I've got a pheasant in the back garden <laughs> who's, who's, who's just thrown in. Uh, so yeah, apologies for the noise, that's what that one is. Right, okay, let's get back to this. So I've got, um, if you remember from earlier, there's my really thick sauce. Panada, that's the thickest of the lot, so it's a panada, it's a really thick sauce. So I've got that one there with my cheese and my meat alternative to bacon is in there. I'm now gonna heat up to it so it boils the butter and the water are gonna be boiling away. Remember that I'm actually using one without handles, but try and make sure if you haven't got handles, they are over the edge there. So what's happening now is the Water is beginning to heat up and it's going to start to simmer first. That's the one that looks like lemonade. 
and then it's going to boil. Now we don't want to be adding the flour until it's actually boiling. Okay, so we're going to get raise that temperature up further to, to boil. Uh, what's going on inside the pan? Oh, let's um, talk about that. So you've got the, and again, we talk about this loads more in GCSE, but the science of this. So what's going on? You've got a pan here that is conducting heat through the heat source, which in my case is a gas hob. You might have electric hob at home. Uh, but that pan is conducting the heat because it's conduction, heat transfer of conduction when we're cooking this one. Inside there is liquid. So what's happening is, and again, this is touching on geography as well, where we're going to, and science, we've got a liquid in there. And what's happening is um, the bottom of the liquid is becoming, um, is becoming less dense as it heats up. It's rising to the top where it cools down, becomes more dense and falls to the bottom. And that movement of liquid in there, that pan like that, that, get it, say, bottom with a bit of the water, heats up, less dense, rises to the top, becomes more dense, falls to the bottom, is convection. So we've got convection currents going on inside the liquid there as it starts to melt off the butter inside the water. So convection and heat transfer. Touching, you know, you've done convection in geography, convection currents, so it can happen, convection can happen in air as well as in water. You might have convection currents in sea in geography, um, but you might have convection in science as well. So um, in physics and science. Okay, so again, you're in control of the heat. If you think it's getting too hot, you can always move that pan out off there. Okay, that's all melting off nicely there. Wonderful. So I'm just stirring this one with, with the spoon, but I am now getting together my whisk alternative. So I have my two forks, my basic whisk. I have got my hand whisk. Da, 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 hand whisk. I have got my electric whisk. And I have got my KitchenAid whisk, which has got a really massive whisk on. It's a massive, massive, huge whisk that spins around really, really fast. So when we get our egg in, we're going to decide which of those whisks we're going to use. Anyway, at the moment, there we go. My butter and my water, my well, water is boiling, it's boiling up, bubble bath. That's boiling, bubble bath at the top. Okay, that's boiling away. My butter is all melted. Fabulous. Um, let's give that stir through. Yeah, it's all melted. And if you stir it, it looks like this lava lamp. It doesn't look like the fats, lipids, are mixing with the water. And that's because they're not. They are, at the moment, they are um, together, but they're unstable. They're unstable in motion. Um, talk about more of that. GCC! Okay, now, time to turn it down to a low heat. And I'm going to flash in. My mixture. Do you remember what it's doing? Now be very careful. I've got quite a high um, uh, bar, uh, quite a high pan here, so it's not going to burn me. But be very careful. You've got a shallow pan, but it's not going to burn. You just stand my back. And three, two, one. Here we go. All at once. And beep, 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 beep. With a wooden spoon, I'm beating. I'm not using this. I'm not using my. Um, not using my. Whisk, yeah. I'm using my wooden spoon just to beat all of this now. I'm beating and beating and beating and beating and beating it, and it looks a little bit like lump of sick again. But I'm beating and beating. I tell you what, that's getting quite warm. I'm going to use an oven glove because I've not. There we go. Let's get an oven glove on there, and I'm going to take it. So I'm going to take it right off so you can see what I'm doing. Beat, 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 beat. I can turn it off the heat now, and you can see what I'm starting to do there. I'm beating, beating, and it's taking it away from the pan there. Can you see it's coming away from the pan as I start to beat that one together? Beep, 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 And it's really coming away from a pan. And as it comes away from the pan, see that there? It's coming away from the pan. As it comes away from the pan, it's cooling down as well, which is what we need to do, because we need to add an egg to this. Now, the egg, um, it's going to be added to this, and it needs to cool it down. Um, and we need to add the egg. When we add the egg, we're adding one egg, we need to keep this moving, and we need to keep stirring it. Hence why we say, using whisks, whether you use a two forks, use one of these whisks, whether you use an electric whisk, okay, or whether you use a ginormous whisk like one of these, whichever you do. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get that shoe pastry in there, and I'm going to get that shoe pastry cooling down by stirring it with a whisk 
and at the same time, I'm going to add my egg. If I didn't keep it moving using a whisk, and if I didn't keep it cooling down using a whisk, what's going to happen? Well, I'll tell you what's going to happen. You're going to end up with scrambled egg in with your flour and butter and water. We don't want a scrambled egg. <laughs> That's no good for a shoe pastry. So what's going to happen now, it's very, very important. We've now beat this so that all the flour's combined. We've got lots of air in there, beating lots of air in. Um, that's going to expand, and we're going to obviously beat some water in that will form steam and expand and form an, um, an air inside. This is going to aerate it. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to add the egg. Now, the egg is going to add extra protein in there, as well as some great vitamins, between A, vitamin D, lots of different vitamins in there as well. Um, eggs are fantastic sources of vitamins, and they're like a jam packed little, little. Anyway, I digress. Eggs, um, good things. We're going to add this in there. They're also going to change and solidify the outside when we cook this one, okay? But we don't want them to solidify right now. We don't want them to, uh, what we call in uh, food science, we don't want them to coagulate or set now. Otherwise, just say you love scrambled egg. So we're going to keep it all moving. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my mix into my KitchenAid, or I could put it into a bowl. With a whisk, I can put it into a bowl and whisk it now. And as I'm starting to whisk it, I'm going to add one egg. Okay? Now, I'm talking to you, so it's going to be a bit hard talking to you and whisking and adding the egg. So I'm going to put it all into this. There we go. I'm just going to put it on there. And what's going on there is that whisk is going round and round and round, cooling it down. But we're now going to add the egg into this as well. My eggs. Oh, left the egg over here. Let me grab, grab an egg. Here's my egg. You could use an egg substitute again. I'm going to add my egg straight into there. So here we go. Crack my egg. Now the egg is now going in there. The egg is in the bowl. Where's the eggs in the bowl? Now the egg's in the bowl and it's being whisked up with it. So what's going on there is I could be doing this by hand. I could be adding the egg in and I could be um, stir it, whisking the egg in with my shoe. That's happening in the machine there. Just whisking it, whisking it, whisking it, whisking it, whisking it. So all of the egg is combined with it. There we go. It's cooling the mixture down and it's not letting the egg cook by that. I mean, it's not allowing the egg to solidify or coagulate, as we say. It is starting to change. It's what we call denaturing. It is starting to change. There's long chains of amino acids that make up the protein that begin to um, come apart, but they're not setting into scrambled egg. We do not want scrambled egg in our shoe pastry. So it's keeping that movement going, cooling down the mixture, and forming a wonderful shoe pastry. So I'm right today, so And that is my egg all combined, I'll show you now. I'm really beating it now, well I'm not, but the machine is, we're really, really beating this one, so we get loads of air in it. But it's the air and the steam that's going to make this expand and get big shoe pastries. Okay, so lift this one up. And you can see what this looks like. Let's get some light off there, stuff a little bit to the whisk. Okay. So what I've got going on in there, you can see the big whisk there has whisked all of the egg into there into a beautiful, uh, beautiful, smooth shoe pastry. I'm just going to get some of that off there and put that into the bowl so we don't waste any of that. Okay, that is beautiful. Oh, love it. It's really smooth. It's really smooth there. You can see that one on the, on the screen there. Beautiful smooth. I'm just getting some of that off the whisk there. Beautiful smooth mix there. Wonderful. Wonderful. All of it all comes up. You get all of that last little bit off. There we go. Wonderful. Now, 
is we're going to get make our pie. Okay, so we're going to make our pie using that wonderful uh, shoe pastry around the outside and put all of our um, center uh, piece, all of our sauce into the middle. We're going to combine these two together to make our pies now. So we're going to need to get our flan or tart trays ready to be able to put all this together. Now before I go over to the work area, I also need to preheat my oven. So I'm just going to, while I'm stood here, I'm just going to preheat my oven. We need to preheat the ovens uh, before we start to cook, so it's really important that the oven temperature is here. So I'm just going to preheat my oven. Now you need to preheat, oops, so move that one back. So let's move back to me. There we go. So we are now, let's move that one around, preheating the oven, which is going to be going to 200 degrees or gas mark six, okay? So 200 degrees or gas mark six, preheating your oven there. Hopefully you've done the same there. Right, let's get back to me. 